There is a new protector of temples in town and it is none other than the Jammu and Kashmir High Court. A research by the print has found that in the last two months, a bench of the High Court has directed at least nine prominent shrines, temples and charitable institutions to be handed over to the Deputy Commissioner or the District Magistrate or ask them to look into encroachments to save temple properties. The court has done so citing widespread encroachment of temples in Jammu and Kashmir owing to militancy in the valley as well as government apathy. These temples and shrines include Sri Bajrang Dev Dharamdas Ji Mandir in Srinagar, Raghunath Ji Temple in Barzilla in uh, Srinagar again, Asthapan Devraj Bharav situated in Gandharbal in Kashmir, Nagbal Gautam Nag Temple in Anantnag, Thakur Dwar Mandir in Srinagar and Shiv Temple in Gulmark. All of these orders have been passed by a bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Kumar and M.A. Chaudhary. In one such order pertaining to the management of Sri Bajrang Dev Dharam Dasji Mandir in Srinagar, the court noted that the loot of temple properties became rampant after 1990 when the Kashmir Valley came under the onslaught of militancy. It noted that the minority community which was frequenting these temples and had interest in their management was made to flee from the valley to save their lives. Consequently, these temples came to be abandoned. This is what the court noted. It then observed, and I quote, Taking benefit of this chaotic situation, so-called Mahans and Babas in connivance with locals encroached upon the properties of the temples. The government of the day, which was battling with sudden splurge and militancy, remained oblivious to the situation of the temples and its properties." Unquote. The bench asserted that since most of these temples and their properties were situated in urban areas and due to their high value, people with vested interests started litigating with each other, some staking their claims on the basis of recorded uh, entry in the revenue record and others on the basis of trust deeds executed by them without any authority of law. Now, this isn't the first time that the High Court has looked into the management of temple properties in the Union Territory. Back in February 2022, then Chief Justice of the High Court, Justice Pankaj Mithal, along with Justice Rajneesh Oswal, was considering petitions highlighting financial irregularities and uh, large-scale illegalities in maintenance and management of Mata Machail Shrine as well as its organization of annual yatras. At the time, the bench had entrusted the management of the shrine to one of the pre-existing shrine boards in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. At the same time, the court had directed the government of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir to explore the possibility of bringing a law for better management of charitable and religious institutions and endowments within the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. And some of the High Court's latest orders also cite this 2022 order. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the High Court's latest orders. One of the most recent orders passed by the bench of the High Court pertains to the land belonging to the Raghunath Ji Temple in Srinagar. The court was hearing a batch of five petitions challenging an order passed on 23rd April 2021 by the Divisional Commissioner. This order had directed expunction of certain entries made in the revenue record of 159 canals of land, which was directed to then be handed over to the Raghunaji Temple. The petitioners also included the family of the detained senior advocate Mia Abdul Qayyum, who was recently arrested in connection with the murder of advocate Babar Kadri in 2020. Before the court, the petitioners explained how they came in possession of the part of the land which originally belonged to the temple. They referred to their grandfather being a tenant of the land, a subsequent compromise between their father and the temple's former Mahant, and another sale agreement for more land between their father and another former Mahant who took over after the earlier Mahant's death. After their father's death, the petitioners claimed to be in possession of a part of the land belonging to the temple as protected tenants. Now, in its order passed on 13th August, the High Court noted that the petitioners were in possession of different parcels of land belonging to the temple as per revenue papers, but said that these issues are to be adjudicated upon by a competent revenue court. As for the management of the temple properties, the court noted that the divisional commissioner through the 2021 order had devised a mechanism to be put in place to manage and develop the temple properties. However, the court said that before such a mechanism can be put in place, the temple properties cannot be allowed to be squandered by so-called Mahans and Babas. 
it asserted that it is high time that the government steps in and takes charge of the temple properties so that these are saved from further encroachments and appropriate action is initiated to free them from encroachments. The High Court then directed the Deputy Commissioner Srinagar to take over the management of the Raghunaji temple and its properties immediately. The High Court also made it clear that henceforth there shall be no mutation attested in the name of any Mahant or his disciple and the properties shall remain in the name of the temple under the management of district administration. Several similar disputes related to the temples in the valley seem to have made their way to the High Court with different parties from alleged encroachers to Mahants approaching the court in hopes of some relief. In 2021, the High Court was approached by Kashmiri Pandit petitioners who had founded the Asthapan Devraj Bharav Trust, which is a trust for preservation, maintenance and management of the Hindu shrines in the valley. Among other things, they were concerned about two important re religious shrines. Uh, one is Asthapan Devraj Bharav situated in Gandharbal in Kashmir and another temple known by the name of Vidushi. They had sought steps to be taken under the Jammu and Kashmir migrant immo immovable property preservation, protection and restraint on distress sales act 1997. This law as the name suggests provides for preservation, protection and restraint on di distressed sale of uh, immovable property of the migrants. It was brought in to address problems that cropped up in wake of migration from the valley and other areas and empowers the district magistrate to take over the possession of immovable property belonging to such migrants and take steps for preservation and protection of the property. Now, the petitioners in this case told the court that these temples in Gandharbal district were abandoned in the wake of mass migration of Kashmiri Pandit community from the valley in 1990. They alleged that the property was now being encroached upon and sought a direction to the district magistrate Gandharbal to protect, preserve and maintain the shrines. In their response, the Gandharbal additional deputy commissioners told the court that during spot verification, it was found that a shopping structure and a service station were constructed on the land by local pandits through one Rajnath Pandita and the property had been rented out to one Prince Mudassir and Manzoor Ahmed Radar. In their response, Two respondents, Rajnath Pandita and Motilal Pandita, told the court that after these properties were abandoned owing to the mass migration of the Kashmiri Pandit community from the valley, they had been managing and looking after the affairs of both the shrines and have rented out a part of the property. Now, in an order passed on 4th of July, the bench, again comprising Justices Kumar and Chaudhary, noted that while it cannot determine the disputed facts in this case, the properties in question are covered by the 1997 law that I just told you about. It then asserted that the Gandharbal district magistrate in whom migrant properties vest after the 1997 law shall immediately take over and protect, preserve and manage both shrines and the properties attached to it. It also said that the DM shall initiate appropriate steps to ensure that any kind of encroachment made on temple properties is removed within eight weeks. In 2018, another Mahant Prem Jai Mishra of Sri Bajrang Dev Dharam Dasji Mandir filed a petition challenging a 2017 decision of the Srinagar District Magistrate. Now, this is another case that I'm telling you about. Through this 2017 order, the DM had withdrawn his permission allowing uh, Dr. Jai Ram Das to perform puja in the temple and had in instead entrusted the daily affairs of the temple to Baba Dharam Das uh, Ram Jeevan Das Trust. Mishra had claimed that the pujari of the temple, Mahant Jai Ram Das, had appointed him as the Muhattamim of the temple property through a 2015 declaration and therefore he staked claim over the right to perform puja and other, other religious rituals in the temple. However, before the court, he made it clear that he was not interested in managing the temple property and only wanted the right to perform puja in the temple. But the court, in an order passed on 13th August, asserted that the temple property in question vests in the deity and therefore none of the parties to the petition or anybody else can stake claim over it. It pointed out that there have been disputes between various sects of the Sadhu Samaj, each claiming the right to manage the temple properties. The bench asserted that this temple property has become a victim of the situation and to some extent apathy of the government. The court then directed that the management of the temple and its properties in their entirety shall be taken over by the Srinagar Deputy Commissioner who shall manage the temple and its properties. It said that this would include making arrangements for performance of daily puja and other religious rituals through a committee of officers of revenue and other departments to be constituted by him. 
The court also asserted that this position will continue till a civil court conclusively determines the rights of the parties or the government of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir comes up with a law as suggested by the court in its 2022 verdict that I mentioned earlier. Allegations of encroachment over temple properties have not just been made against residents but also against government authorities. In 2021, one Ranjit Gurkha approached the High Court claiming to be the president of Shri Shri Jagat Amba Sharika Chakreshwar Sanstha uh, Hari Parbat Srinagar. He claimed to be interested in protection and preservation of temples in the valley, including the Shiv Temple located at Gulmarg. He alleged that a significant portion of the temple has been encroached upon by the Municipal Committee of Gulmarg, as well as the Gulmarg Development Authority for construction of a tourism inquiry office and a lavatory. While the government authorities had denied the allegations, the court on 20th July directed the district magistrate Baramulla to constitute a team of revenue officers headed by the assistant commissioner revenue to demarcate the land vested in and belonging to the temple. It also directed the DM to take over the management of the temple as well as the property. Another such dispute over the land that has been recorded as Dharamshala, which is a charitable institution, uh, which was a disputed land parcel in Hell Kriri Baramulla. The petitioners in the case had challenged a 2022 order passed by the Divisional Commissioner of Kashmir, directing them to hand over the possession of the land to Mahant Subhash Shah. However, however, the bench now opined that neither the petitioners nor the Mahant could claim ownership of the land. It therefore directed that the land shall be taken over by the district magistrate or deputy commissioner Baramulla for its proper management. And another similar order was passed in July 2024. The same bench had directed the deputy commissioner or district magistrate of Anantnag to assume co control over the management of Sri Raghunath Mandir and Nagpal Gautam Nag Temple in Anantnag. In all such orders, the High Court bench has emphasized on the temple properties vesting in the deity and has urged the government to step in and take charge of these properties. That's all I have for you today. This is Apurva Mandhani for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.